Hi, everybody. Good to see you again. We're going to talk about Paul or Saul today. But first, let's do our, our verse. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So what I want you to do today is if you have several of you, you can play duck, duck, goose with this. So one word for each head as you go around saying the verse and then finish with the first John 1, 9. So when you say nine, the person you touch is the one that chases you. All right. So go ahead and do that. Or if you want, if there's not enough people, you can go ahead and say it as you jump rope or say it as you do something like that. That's fun. Okay. So go ahead and do that today. Our story today is in Acts, which is the fifth book in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. So you can find that in the New Testament. And it's continuing our story about Saul. Remember, Saul was the one we talked about last week, how he was persecuting Christians. He was putting them in jail. He was chasing them, trying to get them. He was a real bully. And on his way to Damascus, all of a sudden, God came down and shone a light and blinded him and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And so Saul found out that Jesus was the Son of God and that Jesus had died for him. And there was a man named Ananias that God told to go meet Saul and told him to put it, lay his hands on Saul and have those scales that were on his eyes that was making him blind, made them fall off. And then Saul accepted Jesus. And so it was because of a man named Ananias that um, Saul got started down the Christian path too. All right, so we're gonna talk more about Saul today. Um, so he ran into some problems as he started telling people about Jesus. He wanted to, he had fought the people who loved Jesus so much in the past. He wanted to go around and help them tell people about Jesus now, but he ran into some problems. Um, I want you first to think about someone who might have been a bully like Saul to you before, or maybe someone who disagreed with you. The Jewish leaders didn't believe that Jesus is God's son, so it made them mad. It made them mad to hear them saying that Jesus was the son of God. He has aligned a lot of trouble. See if you can help. As I'm reading this, think maybe of a way that you could help Saul. All right, because then we'll find out what God did. All righty. So here we go. It's in Acts 9, verses 19 through 24. Saul spent several days with the disciples in Damascus. At once he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus is the Son of God. All those who heard him were astonished and asked, Isn't he the man who raised havoc, which is trouble, havoc in Jerusalem among those who call on his name? And hasn't he come here to take them as prisoners to the chief priests? Yet Saul grew more and more powerful and baffled and baffled the Jews living in Damascus by proving that Jesus is the Messiah. After many days had gone by, there was a conspiracy among the Jews to kill him. But Saul learned of their plan. Day and night they kept close watch on the city gates in order to kill him. Back then they had a wall and they had gates that you went in and out of. And so they waited by the gates so that when, if, when Saul was going to leave, they were going to get him. All right, so what would you do to help Saul? Go ahead and talk about it and then come back. Okay, let's read what happened, all right? Verses 25 and 26. But his followers took him by night and lowered him in a basket through an opening in the wall. Well, it had this wall and it had openings in it. They must have had a huge basket, because, I mean, this is a man. Put him in there, had ropes on it, pushed the basket on the other side, and let him down with the ropes. Okay? So, wow, that's quite a plan, isn't it? 
So um, then it says, when he came to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was really a disciple. Oh my goodness. So now he's free from them, but when he gets to Jerusalem, the Christians don't trust him because they knew that he was after them before. Okay, so now he has another problem. So, do you know someone who's mean, someone who's kind of a bully? If they suddenly were nice to you, what would you think? Would you think maybe they were trying to trick you? Sure, you might, right? You wouldn't trust them because they were really mean. Well, that's what happened here. The Christians, they weren't going to trust him. They had seen all the bad things that he had done. So now I want you to huddle up again and think of a way you could help Saul this time. Come back and see me in a minute and we'll see what God did. Okay, let's find out. Verses 27 through 31. So he started out and on his way, he met an Ethiopian eunuch. Wait a minute. I think I changed. Oh, I didn't change the page. <laughs> That's funny. It was verse 27 right there too. Anyway, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the disciples. He told them how Saul on his journey had seen the Lord and that the Lord had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had preached fearlessly in the name of Jesus. So Saul stayed with them and moved about freely in Jerusalem, speaking boldly in the name of the Lord. He talked and debated with the Hellenistic Jews, but they tried to kill him. And when the believers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him off to Tarsus, which is another city. And then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace and was strengthened. Living in the fear of the Lord and encouraged by the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. That means more people came to know Jesus. Isn't that awesome? So what were some ways that they helped? Well, they found ways to get them away from the bad people, right? That's right. And Barnabas went and helped to introduce him to the Christians and said, hey, I've been watching this guy for a while. I've seen how he's boldly pre preached the gospel already. And matter of fact, people are trying to kill him already. And so Barnabas said, you can trust him. He's a Christian now. Jesus is in his heart. Okay. So now does God take care of us that way? Sure he does. He can give us wisdom like that. He can bring people into our lives that can help us like that. Okay. And we can do that for other people too. The Holy Spirit tells people what to do. And puts, a, put, and puts us where we need to be and them where they need to be in our lives, okay? So he took care of Saul in quite a few ways there in those verses. And he'll take care of us too with wisdom and with our family and friends that love us. And most importantly, God already gave his son to die for our sins. That's the best way he took care of us, isn't it? Okay, so now I want you, there's a saying on TV, there's a commercial, you're in good hands with Allstate, the guy with the big deep voice. Well, I don't know if we're in good hands with Allstate, it's an insurance company, but are we in good hands with God? Sure we are. So we're going to make a hand today. What I want you to do is take your hand and put it on a piece of paper on the table and go ahead and draw with a marker or a pen around your hand. Have your fingers a little bit apart like that. And draw around it between each finger as best as you can. All right. And then I want you to use your scissors and cut it out. Cut your hand out so that you have one like this. Okay. And then I want you to take your marker. And I'll go ahead and do mine right now. And I want you to make a, make a stick figure of you. So I want you to make... Somebody that looks like you on there. I'm just going to do a real quick one so you don't have to watch me. <laughs> there I am. See, I've even got my long hair. See, like that. <laughs> All right. So go ahead and do that and then come back. 
And now I want you to think of all the ways that God helps you like every day from the time you wake up to the time you go to sleep. Like, well, he cares for us by bringing the sun up every day. So maybe you can draw a sun on here. Okay. The sun comes up every day and he gives us water and rain. You can make rain on it, one, one, two. Okay. And then he gives you food. So maybe you could draw a picture of some food or you could just write the word food. However you want to do is fine. So we could make a plate maybe of food that he takes care of us that way. He sends us to school, so maybe you could send, put a school building or maybe a school book. Imagine that, a librarian liking books. Huh? Anyway, so we'll make a, a little... Anyway, but make them all the way around your hand like that. Make a whole bunch of them, as many as you can think of, okay? And then I want you to keep that up in your room or on your fridge or something this week to help you remember to thank God for those things. Maybe take one thing every day or every time you pray and thank God for that thing, okay? And that's how he cares for us, isn't it? Okay, they're always taking care of us. From the morning we wake up to, well, even when we're asleep at night, he keeps us safe in our beds. We're warm in our beds. We get the blankets and the pillows. And, you know, some people in this world don't have all those things, do they? No, sometimes they don't. And that's sad. But God takes care of us. Okay, he took care of Paul, and he'll take care of us. Now what I want you to do, I've got my Bible here. We can play a little game. So if you have a couple of you there, you can try to race with this. So you'll need a book or a Bible, all right? Preferably a Bible, but make sure it's one that's not going to get hurt. And pick one side of the room and go to the other side of the room trying to balance it on your head like this. All right? So if you drop it, you have to go back to the start. So try to get from all the way from one end of the room to the other. And the first one who gets there wins, okay? If you don't have somebody to race with, just try to see if you can get across the room, okay? It's still fun to do. All right. So do that. Now, when you're done, come back here, and we're gonna do something else with it. This time, I want you to race across the room with your hands like this, holding your Bible. See what that's like, okay? So go ahead and do that, and then come back. All right, now, which one was easier to do? Which one kept your Bible in better shape? <laughs> you know what? Um, each race was kind of like, which race was kind of like um, how God takes care of you? The one where you he's just kind of balancing you on his head? Or do you feel like he's hugging you, holding you, carrying you? That one, right? The one where he's hugging us, holding us, carrying us. That's how God takes care of us, okay? So um, remember to thank God for gently and safely taking care of you every day, okay? Just like he did with Paul, keeping him from the bad guys. Okay, well, sometimes we can help others too, can't we? God will use us to help take care of others. And sometimes you might feel like since you're a kid, maybe you can't do that as well, all right? But you can. You know what? There was a girl in our church this week who really is helping taking care of a lot of people. Um, right now, you know, the coronavirus is going around and in our nursing home, the medical care facility, there's a lot of people there that have been sick and quite a few of them have even died. And so Olivia was concerned about that. She wrote a report on that for school and she wanted to do something for them. So you know what she's doing? She raised some money. Her mom got her on Facebook and said what she wanted to do and people donated money and she's making cards for all the people who live there and she's gonna treat the people who work there, who are working hard to take care of those people, she's going to get take them treats. And 
Um, she's using that money that they raised to get to treat them to something nice, to take care of them. That she's tapping to take care of those older people and take care of the people taking care of them. So, and she's a young girl. I don't know exactly how old she is, but she's she used to be in my class, and she's in the old, a little bit older class now. But um, so you can do things like that. You can do even just little things. You know, we talked about some of the things that God does for us um, that are just, some of those are just little things and we can do them for other people. I think the church this week, I helped pack some packets that you all got. That's something I did to help try to take care of you guys this week. There are things that you can do. Maybe you can make a hand for somebody else and say, and you know, maybe write something encouraging, maybe a Bible verse on there. Maybe you can write a card. Maybe to somebody who's having to live all by themselves at this time. My mom has to stay in her house all by herself. And so I go help take care of her. So think of a way that you can do something for somebody this week. All right. Okay. So you guys have a great week. Hopefully you guys can come to the drive-in service this week. Um, remember, stay close to Jesus by hugging that's a way we can hug our Bible too, you know, read it because that's God's letter to you. That's his words to you. Alrighty. Have a great week.